Hi, I'm Rupa Michelinani. Thanks for joining us here in New York City. You're watching Arise News Now, your fast forward to stories that affect you. Making headlines around the world in this hour. The Vatican hits back at the scathing United Nations report on child sex abuse. Patients at a hospital in Brazil got much more than medical treatment. We'll explain. And in Colorado, marijuana tours are budding business. Those stories and much more straight ahead. In the Central African Republic, a military ceremony ends with the lynching of a suspected former rebel. We want to warn you that the pictures you're about to see are very graphic. Minutes after President Catherine Sambapanza left, soldiers attacked a young man in civilian clothes. A single Rwandan soldier was unable to stop the mob from hitting, stabbing, and throwing stones at him. After the man died, African Union troops looked on as his killers dragged his body through the streets of the capital, Bangui. In South Africa, eight workers are rescued from a gold mine after a fire and rock slide traps them more than a mile underground. Nine others are still unaccounted for. The miners' union said the blaze broke out last night when an earthquake near Johannesburg damaged power lines as well as ventilation and water pipes. South Africa's gold mines are the deepest and most dangerous in the world, with 112 people dying in 2012 alone. In Kenya, a governor apologizes for suggesting that unmarried women are ineffective leaders. Speaking at a rally that was broadcast on national television, William Kabogo said something was wrong if a woman was unmarried by the age of 35. Women and female groups blasted the politician, forcing him to backtrack his comments and, quote, seek forgiveness. In our top story out of Baghdad, where at least 25 people are dead after three bombs strike near the heavily fortified Green Zone. Another 30 people were injured in one of the most deadly attacks. A suicide bomber hit a checkpoint leading into the area that houses most of the Iraqi government, as well as the British and American embassies nearby. Two other bombs targeted the foreign ministry and a commercial area. More than 600 people died in January alone, putting this year on the road to eclipse 2013, which was one of the deadliest ever. Pakistan is also reeling from a suicide bombing. Yesterday, eight people were killed and another 42 injured in a Shiite district in northwest Peshawar. The Taliban quickly condemned the attacks, leading authorities to believe there might be a third party trying to destabilize the country. The Taliban and the government caused outrage among insurgent groups when they announced they were in peace talks. In Libya, six children are severely injured when a terrorist tossed a hand grenade into a school. Police there have struggled to gain control of militant factions since they refused to disarm following the ousting of the dictator Muammar Gaddafi. While no group has yet claimed responsibility for the attack, authorities believe it is connected to the Islamist group Ansar al-Sharia. The Vatican hits back at scathing UN reports on child sex abuse while a victim welcomes new recommendations. Nathan Frandino reports. A new report by the United Nations condemns the Vatican for its handling of child sex abuse cases. The Holy See has consistently placed the preservation of the reputation of the church and the protection of the perpetrators above children's best interests. The report by the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child found that the church uses policies and practices that have let abuse continue without punishment for the perpetrators. The committee also demanded that the Vatican immediately remove all clergy who are known or suspected child abusers and turn them over to civil authorities. Another matter was the code of silence that was imposed by the church on children and the fact that reporting to national law enforcement authorities has never been made compulsory. The Vatican has yet to respond to the allegations published in the report. Last month, the grandmother of one of the children alerted the police when the baby went missing. On Monday, police raided the home and made the grisly discovery. An autopsy will be conducted today while the mother is detained. A former German chancellor accuses the United States of having no respect for its allies. Gerhard Schroeder blasted the U.S. after a newspaper reported that it had, been, had bugged his phone since 2002. While spying between nations is not news, the chancellor said spying on leaders was a step too far. 
Germans in particular are sensitive about privacy since the communist era, secret police built a massive network of surveillance. Usually, you go to a hospital for medical help, but in Brazil, some patients got more than they bargained for. Jillian Kitchener explains. Hospital employees and patients were robbed of their valuables by gunmen who stormed a Rio de Janeiro hospital Monday night. The assault was captured by security cameras. According to local police, at least five gunmen robbed an estimated 22 patients and staff at the hospital Norchador. Police deputy Jorge Zara explains. Five or six suspects entered the hospital pretending that they needed help. This is why they were not stopped by the doorman. Two of them were armed, and two or three collected the valuables, such as cell phones, from people they found accompanying those in need of medical care. He said a victim was able to identify one of the suspects, and officers were searching the streets for him. But the incident leaves residents shaken up, like this woman who had to pick up her exams from the hospital. I don't know how to say it, not even the sick are safe. No one was physically injured, and as of now, no one has been detained in connection with the crime. South America is notorious for violence. Just last week, doctors and nurses in Venezuela protested for better security after a robbery on a public hospital there. And just days before the Winter Olympic Games are to begin in Russia, a train carrying tanks of fuel derails and explodes into a massive ball of fire. Amateur video shows clouds of black smoke billowing out of the blaze. The crash happened in a mountainous region about 550 miles northeast of Moscow. In all, 12 tanks caught fire, requiring more than 300 firefighters to combat the flames. So far, hundreds of people have been evacuated, though no casualties are reported. And trains in London are stopped for another reason, striking workers. Employees started their two-day boycott to fight job cuts and office closures. The partial shutdown forced about three million commuters to figure out a different way to get around as roads in the capital barely cope with the extra demand. And builders have long sought durable materials that don't weigh them down. And it seems the answer lies in their bones, literally. German scientists use high-tech 3D printers to recreate the intricate architecture of bones. They say it's the arrangement of air within the material that allows it to be strong and light and lightweight. Mass production is still many years away, but we could one day see technology even in planes. And you're watching Arise News Now. If I was building my own network, it would be for the people, by the people. Um, it would be very diverse. It would be with every culture you can think of. If I was to start my own news network, it would, it would reflect positive and negative within the co continents and the countries around the world. I think that I would be more looking towards young people. If I were to build my own news network, it would look like New York City. Old, young, fresh, hip, classic. If I was to build my own news network, I would um, just have people who from all over who are very connected um, and diverse. If I was to build my own news network, my own world network, uh, I would love a correspondent in every country, every location, every city. I mean, it's kind of unrealistic, but how cool would it be to get local stories from the impoverished country, the impoverished city that we don't know about? Arise News, every culture, every angle. In the United States, the number of U.S. inmates exonerated after being falsely convicted of a crime hit a record high last year, according to a new study. 87 were found to have been wrongly convicted, according to a report out Tuesday by the National Registry of Exonerations. Nearly half of those exonerated prisoners had been convicted of murder, and about one-third of those exonerations involved cases in which no crime had occurred. Texas had the most exonerations at 13. Winter storms blanket parts of the U.S. with inches of snow and more is expected. Roy Paul has more. Harsh winter weather in the form of heavy snow is battering parts of the United States normally spared of such conditions. Roads in Kansas, Nebraska, and Missouri pose serious risk for drivers with at least two known deaths from weather-related incidents. Authorities have been warning residents to stay off the roads, and the National Weather Service warned of extremely difficult travel conditions. 
More than seven inches of snow has fallen in Kansas City area by nightfall, with more expected later Wednesday. Meteorologists say the storm system is heading northeast and could dump more than a foot of snow on parts of Pennsylvania, New York, and other New England states. Roy Paul, Arise News. Susan Rice, U.S. President Barack Obama's national security advisor, blasted Israel on Twitter. The Post on Monday condemned Israel over its criticism of Secretary of State John Kerry's threats of a boycott should peace talks with the Palestinian Authority fail. She called them unfounded and unacceptable. Rice's comments are the latest in a series of American replies to Israeli officials who criticized Kerry for his threats at the Munich Security Conference. Eight Los Angeles police officers violated department policy for use of deadly force. This after they shot two women during last year's manhunt for renegade ex-officer Christopher Dorner. The two women were in a pickup truck similar to the one authorities said Dorner was driving, and the officers had received reports that the suspect was in the area. The police chief said Tuesday that state law prohibits him from discussing punishment for individual officers. And Martin Luther King Jr.'s children are locked in yet another legal battle, this time over the civil rights icon's Nobel Peace Prize and his personal Bible. The complaint against daughter Bernice King was filed Friday by her father's estate, which is controlled by her brothers, Martin Luther King III and Dexter King. Bernice King said in a statement Tuesday that her brothers want to sell the Bible and medal to a private buyer, which she opposes. Texas is set to execute a woman convicted of killing a man for his insurance money. Susan, Suzanne Basso is accused of leading a plot to kidnap, torture, and then beat a mentally disabled man. The state, which executes more people than any other in the United States, has planned the execution by lethal injection at its death chamber in Huntsville. If the execution goes ahead, Basso would be the 14th woman put to death in the country since the U.S. Supreme Court reinstated the death penalty in 1976. And a naked man in Florida died Tuesday night after he assaulted a retired police officer, bit another man on the face, and was then shot during a confrontation with deputies. It was not immediately clear whether the man died from a gunshot wounds or from a medical condition. Neither the names of the deceased man nor the assault victims were released to the public. The motive for the assault is still unknown. A bond hearing is underway Wednesday for a former Tampa, Florida police captain charged with second-degree murder. A judge is deciding whether to grant 71-year-old Curtis Reeves bail. Reeves is accused of killing 43-year-old Chad Olson after getting into an argument over texting in a movie theater. Actor Philip Seymour Hoffman's cause of death remains undetermined. Pending further studies, a spokeswoman for New York City's chief medical examiner said today. Four people arrested in New York have been charged with drug offenses possibly connected to narcotics found at the home of Hoffman following his death of an apparent heroin overdose, according to police officials. The four were arrested on Tuesday during a raid on a building in Lower Manhattan after police traced what they believed to have been the source of the heroin suspected of killing the Oscar-winning actor. Hoffman's death comes amid a recent surge in heroin abuse. Martha Buckner has this report. As the world mourns the loss of actor Philip Seymour Hoffman in a suspected heroin overdose, officials are taking a closer look at the deadly drug. Well, certainly uh, uh, the loss of somebody famous, and especially to, to a drug like heroin, really brings a lot of attention to it. But we've really been tracking this resurgence or this upsurge now for quite a while. That's Gil Kurlikowski, the U.S. Director of National Drug Control Policy. He says officials are seeing a sharp increase in the drug's use. It's a very different uh, uh, heroin problem than something we'd experienced in the past. Hoffman was found Sunday with a syringe in his arm and about 50 small bags of heroin in his Manhattan apartment. According to the Drug Enforcement Agency, deaths by heroin overdose have increased 45 percent in the last five years. Officials blame the increase on the rise of addictive prescription drugs like Vicodin and Oxycodone. James Hunt is the acting special agent in charge for the New York Division of the DEA. Overall usage, uh, we believe, is up. Uh, it's been fueled by the abuse of prescription medications, Oxycontin, Roxycontin, Vicodin, and uh, unfortunately they become addicted on these opiates. And uh, when they can't get it anymore, uh, they go to the street and this heroin is plentiful and it's cheap and potent in the street. 
I think this is going to be a really exciting series. An autopsy of the actor's body was performed on Monday, but it's not known when the results will be released. Singer Clay Aiken launched his bid for Congress Wednesday. The former contestant on the American Idol singing show will run as a Democrat for a North Carolina seat now held by a Republican. In a video posted on YouTube, Aiken stressed his upbringing by a single mom and his days as a special education teacher in explaining why he wants to serve in Congress. And you're watching Arise News Now. Arise serves underserved communities by bringing them news, information, sports, and entertainment from places that are becoming part of the world economy, that are becoming a part of the world voice, and decisions that are affecting things in the world that people care about. They care about the economy. They care about safety and security. And if you come to Arise and you watch our broadcast, these are the things we're going to bring to you every day, 24 hours a day. Samsung on Tuesday announced that its newest Pro Tablet line is going to be launched in the U.S. in the coming weeks. The gadgets, ranging between $400 and $900, can be pre-ordered on Samsung.com and on Amazon and Best Buy. Samsung also said that it will provide over $800 in premium content for the Galaxy Note Pro and Tab Pro tablets through Galaxy Perks. Sony will no longer sell computers. The Japanese electronics group has been battling to turn around its computer and television businesses, which have been weighing on its profits. The company now plans to sell its PC business to a new company. PC sales have been hurt globally by the growing sales of tablet devices, with shipments falling by 13 percent. And Radio Shack has announced plans to close 500 of its stores. The electronics franchise says it will begin to close stores within the next few months around the country. Radio Shack is approximately 4,500 stores nationwide. The news comes two days after a Radio Shack television advertisement during Sunday's Super Bowl was viewed as one of the big winners by people in the industry. From a desktop computer to a handheld version, technology is constantly changing. Soon, you may be able to wear your technology. For a look at the latest trend in wearable technology, we turn to Julian Phillips. Talking about technology, it's becoming a global phenomenon. Wearable technology, sometimes called fashion electronics. High-tech gadgets that's helping to change the way consumers work and play. And experts say they aren't going away anytime soon. Technology expert and Quantum LLC CEO Ari Zaldan joins us now with more information on these gadgets and shows us how they work. Welcome. Great to be here. And, you know, Ari, you, well, first of all, you, you've got the, the Google Glass uh, glasses <laughs> on, and your card is even high-tech here. I mean, this thing it could blind one of our cameramen. This is ridiculous. <laughs> and it's dangerous also, uh, so you, you have use, to be careful. Yeah, you can use this yeah. as a weapon. Exactly, all right. a cutting knife. Well, first of all, let's talk about the, the glasses Great. you have. I mean, these things look ridiculous. Do I saw they? somebody walking down the street I'm sort of on a, I'm like. on a fence right now, whether it's, whether it's a fashion faux pas or it's actually it's very fashionable. Well, but, maybe um, it will be soon, soon enough as Burberry gets in. in, in there you in, go. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell us, about, what, what do these glasses do? So this is what's called wearable technology. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start seeing, obviously, we're going to start seeing a lot more glasses on the market. There are smart watches. Mm -hmm. Obviously, your phone is somewhat considered wearable technology as well. We carry it around. Right now, wearable technology is a $3 billion market. Mm -hmm. Over the next five years, it's going to grow to about $12.9 billion. Okay. I, I want to try these yeah, glasses cool. on for me. I, I want to see what these things, these, 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 these things do. You know, I'm, I'm a... How these guys, how these things look, guys? I look, I look chic? I look good here in the studio? Really? It works well with your tie also. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Color the, coordinated. The blue, the blue and the orange well, is great, see, though. That, okay, look, before we get into this thing, it's like a fashion statement, too, because they said Burberry. I think they're consulting Burberry to, to make this. Make of these. course. Of course. I mean, fashion technology, they have a very close relationship. So, right. so the, the idea of these is Google wants to be, Google's in the content space, so they want to mm -hmm. capture everything. Mm -hmm. So what better to have a screen right on top of your eyes, so you can take photos with it, you could read your email, take videos, and on and on. All right, so even if you have these glasses on, I hear there's some concerns from people that this might be a compromise to privacy. Of course. Of and course, and that's always a conversation. Look, whenever you, you have can, a... You can a, wear these. Whenever, <laughs> <laughs> whenever you have a, a 
relatively complicated ecosystem, there's always going to be pockets of inefficiencies, mm -hmm. right? So you're online, you have banking transactions, there's always going to be concerned whether we're talking, look, you were talking to Scott before about, mm -hmm. uh, about identity theft. I right. mean, point in case also, there's always going to be pockets of inefficiencies. You know, I'm getting kind of scared about these things. I mean, <laughs> let's talk about GPS backpacks sure. also. Uh, what, what do they do? I mean, they, they, you're, so you can... What, what do they do? Talk so to me it could find, the backpacks could find your location. So mm -hmm. it's in a, a perfect uh, situation or a good application for the backpacks would be um, if you're out there camping or you're, you're skiing on a high mountaintop. So if you're under an avalanche, it could actually track your coordinates and then send it back to a police station. And actually, this would be good for parents who want to make sure they know where their kids are at all times going to school. Right. So child tracking is, is a sector that's about to blow up. Mm -hmm. Alzheimer's tracking for, for the elder, elderly community also. Mm -hmm. um, these are all examples how technology is helping the consumer. People always talk about the problems. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so many good things too that are created with technology, and it, it makes it makes I think it makes life a lot easier. Yeah, but I want to dwell on the negative. Okay, <laughs> my producer Alvina says that these things, the Google glasses here, might be a concern, and you know, the thing for police, the people wearing these things, not paying attention to the road, so on and so forth. Do you see that being a problem? Alvina's right, 100. percent I mean, I I wear it uh, I wear it driving, and it's definitely it's a distraction. Oh, come on, why? And, and, so, it, it, so, it, it is a distraction. Why are you wearing it? Because it's very cool. Because it's very cool. And people. Do you are, know what you look like with those and, things and, on? And people. Listen, I was, I was telling people before, I was in the elevator, and, uh, and half the people gravitated towards me. The other people got off at an earlier floor because they weren't able to make sense of what it was. There was one but, person that says and believes that you are the king of cool and uh -huh. the king of tech, and that's my well, producer, Alvina. Well, she's amazing. So, I beg uh, to differ. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't would wear these things. Well, you're going to get to like me. Don't worry. Uh, no, no, I will. No, not, not, not you, yes, I like. The glasses, The glasses you're thing. not too crazy All about. Right, what, what else do we have out there outside of these glasses and GPS backpacks that we can look forward to? So there's, uh, there's watches. Um, the iWatches are, are a hot item right now, and health tech is huge. I mean, right now you can you could download apps and you can carry these little monitors on your on your belt. It could tell you uh, how many feet you've walked, and it could monitor your weight loss. Which I is don't pretty know if amazing. I want to know all this stuff. I'm monitoring my weight loss. It's, I just it, want a pizza. <laughs> I want something with cholesterol. Well, it could, it could actually tell you how many steps there it, it is to the to the local pizza store. So if you're interested in location-based services, there's an example. Oh, but God. yeah, it's 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 data it's data overload. There's a lot a lot of data out there, and technology is. Uh, I think technology is amazing. It's on the forefront of innovation, and it's, uh, it's going to drive our economy. The intrepid Ari Soldan. Thank you. Thank you. My new best friend. <laughs> you can you keep go. those glasses. Thank you. You, you. you could borrow it if you like. <laughs> and you can catch more business news on Arise Exchange every Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 10 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. You're watching Arise News Now. News can definitely be improved when reflecting diversity. A lot of mainstream news, they, they don't dive into it. Who wants to hear about negativity all the time? They only show what you what they think people want to know and not what people really should know. World-based stories, that's what I enjoy the most. I think uh, diversity of news is important to the world so that everybody will be aware of their surroundings and what is happening today. Arise News, every culture, every angle. And in health news, tobacco will no longer be sold at CVS pharmacy stores beginning October 1st. The move makes CVS the first chain of national pharmacies to take tobacco products off the shelves. The chain is the largest pharmacy in the United States based on total prescription revenue. Health-oriented organizations and President Barack Obama have praised the move. Experts are concerned about the spread of a new strain of bird flu that has already killed one woman in China. They also fear that the virus could mutate to spread far and wide. The source of the infection remains unknown. This particular strain of influenza, a virus has not been seen before, and scientists say the potential for it to become a pandemic should not be underestimated. And in sports news, the Jamaican bobsled team can breathe a sigh of relief now that its luggage has been found. After a huge fundraising campaign, the team made it to Sochi Olympics, but their luggage didn't due to the winter storm. The Jamaican bobsled team is at the Olympics for the first time since 2002. In basketball news, seven-time retired NBA All-Star Tracy McGrady is going after his lifelong dream of becoming a baseball pitcher. The former NBA great is trying out for the Sugarland Skeeters, a minor league team. It's the same team that Roger Clemens pitched for years ago. 
By the way, 34-year-old McGrady isn't the only basketball to baseball player. Superstar Michael Jordan played for a Chicago baseball team during his first retirement from basketball. In other basketball news, the Los Angeles Lakers suffered their seventh straight loss against the Minnesota Timberwolves. The Lakers' defense, or lack of, was off Tuesday at the Target Center. The team also lost another two players after getting back their two injured point guards. Final score, Minnesota 109, Lakers 99. In soccer, Cape Verde's team has lost its legal bid to be reinstated in the World Cup. The Africans were kicked out of the final stages of the CAF qualifying competition for Brazil 2014 for fielding an ineligible player in the win over Tunisia in September. It's official. Major League Soccer made an announcement on Wednesday that retired soccer star and model David Beckham will get an expansion franchise. The Major League Soccer commissioner said it's the first time that an ex-athlete is joining the ownership group. The new team will begin to play in Miami in 2017. Beckham retired from the LA Galaxy. He chose to exercise an option in his contract that said he could buy a team for below the market $25 million. You're watching Arise News Now. Media and reporters have a lot to answer for. AIDS, hunger, um, people not having running water, the things that we just take for granted. I think the most important issues in the world today are education and poverty. Terrorism and war, I guess, is always. It's always an issue and, you know, the quality of life of certain, certain groups of people in certain areas. I think inequality. Arise News, every culture, every angle. The vision here is not just to tell the main stories of the day, but to tell the news that other organizations don't tell and tell it in a way that people like me, people that look like me, that look like you, are interested in. President Barack Obama went to Sub-Saharan Africa. We were the only station that covered it wall to wall. We, as the network, and the people that view our network, were the better for it. In Denver, Colorado, tour operators offer visitors upscale marijuana tours of the Mile House City. As Sharon Reich reports, it's a budding business. They call themselves pot concierges, veteran marijuana smokers who, for a fee, will safely guide you through the greener side of Denver. Colorado Rocky Mountain High Tours is owned by Addison Morris. It's just one of several pot-focused tours embracing Colorado's decision to legalize recreational marijuana sales. Since it's illegal to smoke pot in public, she says she runs a special kind of tour, one with an air of sophistication. I put a group of eight adults into a limo. Uh, each one of them has a designer bag filled with gourmet munchies. Within 15 minutes, they make their first buy because what they're here for is to get high. <laughs> and soon after that, they get hungry. The fee of $325 includes a pre-ordered meal at one of the area's restaurants. So we're on our way to Ganja Gourmet, which um, sells edibles. Here, guests can purchase items including pot brownies, gummy candies, and marijuana buds with unique names. Some green crack. Oh, let's see. Check that out. Food is a popular theme when it comes to weed. So you just reduce the balsamic. Put a little bit of your cannabis butter in there. My 420 Tours offers three days of pot-related activities, like this cooking with cannabis class. For $1,200, co-founder Matt Brown says clients get to feel like they're spending a weekend with their best friend in Colorado. They're coming to you know, experience life living in the future. They tend to be my parents' age, uh, my age or older. And for somebody like that to come in whose only memory is that weed brownie somebody's friend made in college that got them really super high, uh, this is a whole new world. Indeed it is. Chef Blaine Hine has crafted a menu for foodies. Lamb meatballs with a balsamic cannabis reduction, chocolate truffles infused with cannabis, and granola made with cannabis honey. You know, if your friends like to eat marijuana, then you'd have them dip it. If they don't and you just want to get a little buzz, drizzle it on there for them. You know, but definitely know who you're giving this to because 
It's a very complex thing. Complex, but delicious. I think the products turned out really good. Neither of the tour company operators is willing to disclose just how much they've made in profits so far. But one thing is sure, pot-themed vacations are no longer just a pipe dream.